Hi, I'm Bill Black from Spirit River. What I'd like to do today is show you some of the ways to use our many types of dubbing. First off, let me explain what dubbing is. Dubbing is usually a fiber, either synthetic or animal, that you twist onto a string and you wind that around to create uh, a body or a thorax of the fly that you're going to use. Um, there's a couple easy ways to mess or keep your dubbing organized. I'm not going to say mess with them, but <clears throat> I use a binder ring here, and I find that very convenient when you're when you're playing with packages of dubbing. This keeps all your dubbings together. In fact, you can have a ring for all your synthetics, for your dazzle hairs here, like we would have there. We are the inventor, or I am the inventor, of the dubbing dispenser. It dawned on me one day to punch a bunch of holes in the bottom of a box where I stored my dubbing so I could tease it out, kind of like a, um, a tissue box. Um, we've since been copied by a lot of people, but this is the true dubbing dispenser. We won a KUDO award on it. Um, this makes it really, really convenient. Now, about dubbing, there's a lot of different types of dubbing on the market. Uh, coarse dubbings are much tougher to tie with. The finer the denier, the easier they are to tie with. You've also got to think about dubbing as far as well, how you want the fly or the pattern to perform. Some dubbings will absorb water more than others. We have an incredible uh, dry fly dubbing called Fine and Dry that is really, really, really fine. And I'll show you a touch on how to use that and just how fine it goes. Let me show you a couple techniques. This is a little bit of light bright, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to pull a chunk out and I'm going to do a technique uh, where this is, I, I actually call this the the whip technique and that's where you just start, you hold on to it here, but you start the loop here and you bring that up and as you can see I can in no time build up a nice little body. The other thing that I like to do is I really like to take a velcro teaser another tool that Spirit River sells and I like to brush out a lot of my dubbings. It really just makes it look much buggier and once you do that especially with our light bright which is a very nice, fine, synthetic mylar. I'll go up at it like this, and I'll go down, and I'll clip it, and then I'll go back and put it back. And you can see, I mean, that almost looks like an insect, and that is just dubbing on the shank of the hook. There's another technique that I like to do. I'll use a little different color here, and it's called center tying. So I'm going to go back here a little ways on this, and um, it's really not so much a dubbing technique, as an overall technique to use dubbing. So I'll go around three times right in the middle of the material and then I take one or two wraps to tie it back. Um, this really creates a much a really nice full body. Um, it's fast, it's easy, and boy is it effective. What I'm going to show you now is a way to just do normal dubbing. This technique basically is you take a bit of your fiber, you pull out your bob bobbin, you take the, your fingers, and you only go in one direction. Okay? And as you go down, you squeeze tight. Then you can go around and you can create the body of the fly or whatever it is you're, you're trying to achieve. Here's another technique I really like. It's kind of fun. It creates a really, really beautiful little larva or pupa. What I've done is I've taken our um, stretch tubing. You can see how, how it stretches. And I'll take uh, the Loon Outdoor High Tack. Uh, dubbing wax and just put a little bit on and then you can take any kind of material I'm going to use a little bit of this and you can just kind of 
put it on there like that. And this is also called touch dubbing technique. Now what happens is some of that dubbing is going to get trapped underneath this. So you can see how it's getting trapped under the cord. And it really kind of uh, creates the illusion um, of life, color, and movement. Okay? Let me um, show you also how to make a dubbing loop. This is commonly used on coarser types of dubbing like this. So I've got my thread on the hook. I go down and leave about four to six inches. And I then bring my thread back on it so both of these will come together to a point. Then I bring my thread up. And what I really like to do here is I'll do a half hitch or two and get rid of that thread for now. Now I've got a loop. In that loop, I'll take a, just a little bit of dubbing and I'll start shoving it into the middle of that loop. You can take a paper clip, you can use a fish hook. I've got this little twist dubbing twister, which are very inexpensive. And I'll start twisting it in one direction. And you can see that I'm going to start forming a bit of a noodle here. You can also take and fluff it up just a little if you want. Then I grab the tip of this and I'll go around here. This creates a really nice spiky and very sturdy body. I go back to my thread, add my thread, and tie it off. So I've got all these loose little threads there. What I've done is I've taken a loop of fine wire and I'll make, I want my loop to be about this big, say three to four inches. I clip that, put a little curl in it, um, fold those back over themselves so they don't come undone. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here now and get rid of my thread. In essence, you're making, instead of a dubbing loop with um, with thread, you're making a dubbing loop out of um, wire. This will aid in the uh, fly sinking. It's also very, very durable. And if done properly, you can sometimes see a little bit of that wire poking through. People do this with a uh, they add peacock into this as well, but look at that nice little body that I'm doing there. And when I every time I go around here, I'm going to pull those fibers back. I go around and around and put my bobbin and thread back on. I'll go around three or four times here. There's three or four times. Pull that all back, and you've got an extremely buggy and a very durable body. Anyway, that's how you um, use some of our dubbings. Please talk to your dealers. We Spirit River has a lot of different dubbings that we offer in a lot of different um, uh, thicknesses and for a lot of different uses. As you can see in the box behind me, I've got all sorts of just leech and bugger yarn or dubbings that are absolutely beautiful. So play with this stuff uh, and enjoy your fly tying and support Spirit River. We very much appreciate it.